and they make the argument that certain things must be secret. Is that a form of censorship? Is that a form of, of just kind of hiding whatever it is that they need to hide and not revealing? So there's, there's many areas where, where they're the gray area. Well, you're saying when is, cens is, there such, is censorship ever um, justifiable? Yeah. And just one, the thing that flashed through my mind was that I know in, in the Jewish tradition, I mean, like post-World War II, you don't, talk, you don't tell kids under, you know, 10 years old or something about the, you don't let them see the pictures of the Holocaust. Right. <clears throat> so, and yet. Why? Because it's, they're so horrific that they would, they would have nightmares. Which is, I think, is, exactly. Is, is, but but, but yeah. then you think of all the children in Iran, in Iraq, in Central America, who, who, in Vietnam, who saw all of that. And they, you know, who saw that, who saw it firsthand, not just photographs, but the actual, the genocide that was going on around them. So the children in the world are not protected. So I mean, I'm, not, I'm just saying that that's, that's doesn't that parallel your the, the the comment you made in terms of the U.S. soldier holding? Yes. I mean, it's we we have a piece of information. We know the information is is to whatever degree. Forget the photograph for a second, because I can't say that that's factual or not. But I can say that Holocaust is factual. Right. So by not delivering the picture the complete, the information that is necessary to have a full comprehension of what took place, does not that somehow inevitably do more damage to the, having a, a, a really critical intellectual, deep understanding of what had transpired during a particular time rather than removing it? It's the same as when you talked about violence. It's, it's like, well, there's more violence on, there's more violence on anywhere than there right. is on, on, on what is right. being censored in the movies. I mean, what exactly are, we, and who exactly are we protecting what from? Well, that, I, that's, that's what, that's... Actually, I'm going to even add to that, because I'm, I don't disagree with you. Um, but I want to tell you so what's happening now in the, you know, early 21st century. I use the My Lai Massacre photo whenever I can. I don't know how many of you... And babies and babies. And babies. It, it's it just just real briefly. It, it's a photograph that was taken during in 1968. Eight, seven or eight, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I think it was eight because it was it kept a secret for over a year and it was uncovered. So it was 67 and, is when it happened then maybe. Well, it was well, uncovered in 60. Sorry. It was uncovered it in, in November 69. So I'm guessing it was Makes 68. Sense. But anyway, we're, and and it was um, U.S. government sends documentary photographers all the time. I mean, you see all those World War II movies that they have real movies and then real documentary footage. Just because they had cameras on the planes and cameras on the jeeps and even if nobody survived, the cameras, you know, still going. Well, they did the same thing in Vietnam. They're doing the same thing now. Now they're censoring the image even more than they did then. But they censored the image. They, they gave the photographer on each action. Every, every company had their own photographer. And they would take the camera every night, change the film, give him back you know, new film the next day, and he'd go out again. Well, this one cameraman, his name was Ron Heberly, and he's with Charlie Company, and they're on a search and destroy mission, and they didn't think to ask that he had his own camera and his own film. So the My Lai Massacre, there were many massacres that happened in Vietnam, but not ones that made the light of day. And this particular massacre, between five and 700 civilians were massacred, primarily women and children, some elderly men. Uh, many of the women were raped and tortured before they were killed. There's one story where there's a, literally a ditch filled with bodies and a baby managed to crawl out of the ditch and the Lieutenant Kelly, who was the, 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 the head of the Charlie Company, ordered one of the soldiers to kill the baby. And the soldier, you know, that was, too much. So Kelly <clears throat> takes out his gun and shoots the baby. So a year and a half later, the thing make, becomes public. It was kept secret from the Vietnamese. It wasn't secret from the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese knew what was going on. It was kept a secret from the US taxpayers that are paying for this atrocity. So Mike Wallace, and, and, and in fact, the, 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 the independent journalist who uncovered it was Seymour Hirsch, the same independent journalist that uncovered the, the Abu Ghraib photographs and scandal. 
So there's, Mike Wallace is interviewing one of the soldiers that, that was, took part in the massacre, and he asked the soldier, and babies? And the soldier answered, and babies. So the New York Times the next day put the, you know, literally the quote, had the dialogue in the paper. Well, the Art Workers Coalition, a group of artists against the war in New York, this is before computers, before, you know, power, you know, uh, uh, Photoshop. You know, they photographed the New York Times text. They blew it up really big. They put it on top of the photograph. And they made 50,000 posters and they disseminated it all over the United States and Europe. Well, I show that photo, that poster, a lot because it shocks, it still has the ability to shock because most people don't know about it. If they're, you know, if you're under, 40 years old, you don't, probably if you're on 50, you don't even know about it. So I had a group of graduate students in design, not from this school, from another school. And I pulled that out and they were saying, whoa. And I thought they were responding to the horror <laughs> of the image. The you know what they were responding to? To the design. No. 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 Those, <laughs> no. Those babies look real. How did they get them in there? Whoa. They thought it was fake. They thought Photoshop. it was doctored. They thought it was Photoshop. And the professor and I went like, <laughs> like catatonic for a second. We live in the post Forrest Gump time. After, I mean, I hated that movie. It was my daughter's favorite movie, and it was the worst movie I've ever seen. Because you could no longer believe what you saw. You could no longer, you know those Holocaust photos are real, but there's going to be a whole period of time when all the survivors are gone, and somebody's going, oh, that's all Photoshop. Because what was that other horrible movie she liked? Um, Shallow Hal? <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I happened to walk by the TV at the moment where they literally uh -huh. made somebody look like a walking Holocaust survivor. And it was like unbelievable they could, that they could do that with a real person to manipulate the image to make them look like they look in those documentary photographs. How can people, we're, we're back to Galileo. That's right. We're back to Galileo. So, you know we've never been to the moon. That, I, <laughs> I, I've heard that. You've heard that. Let me, let, me, let me be oppositional here, because now you've opened the <clears throat> avenue. And back to the Adorno quote, which I think is made about images of the Holocaust, with this idea that the image of violence has the potential to elicit pleasure which is kind of at the heart of all conceptual art, right? Because th this idea that once you have an image and you have a very strong image, you're actually open to manipulation in the ways in which like the Nazi propaganda functioned. Um, so kind of a... a well, go, go. <laughs> two, two, two different things. One, one is, is that I think the, the to bring up the, I, which is I think is a, is a, is a legitimate <clears throat> overt governmental use of censorship is sort of what we would call the degenerate art. When degenerate art, when art, a particular, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> the, the degenerate art in reference to the exhibition when the Nazis showed <clears throat> all the avant-garde art and they said, look at those people, they can't even paint. Um, well, it was, it, was, it, it, it was worse. I mean, it, it suggested that, this, that this, the, the form of art making that was being done at the time, which would have been contemporary art, not only had no validity, but it didn't fit within the dogmatic political ideology that was being um, suggested to, uh, as being the, the more powerful one that was necessary in order to purify the world in order t for it to run in a much more orderly manner, one might say. Uh, so there's a good example, I think, of talking about how an entire, not just a artist, but just the, 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 the largest swath of individuals get put into one category. But something that Carol said that I want to bring up, put, to bring the, I want to keep wanting to come both back and forward. So I make it your list on the Vietnam, and this is prior, again, I know that some of this sounds a little obscure for one of the, for me, one of the most extraordinary uh, technological inventions, and, and I'm a huge, huge advocate of it, is search engines. In about like 
point zero 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 one of a second you can have more data on more information on anything that has taken place in human history than has ever been possible before period that's it but that, that data is highly censored. Uh, 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 no problem about the censorship, but the simple fact that the data is accessible in some shape or form, and then the next step is to decipher what that information is. Never before could you punch in, I, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's half this room's got computers. You yeah. can punch in anything that you want and know something about something that would have taken you years to research before. Not if you're in China. Well, yes. okay, you yeah. know. <laughs> but what changed the Vietnam War which is a war that's important to remember is the one that we forgot. There's, there's, more, there's a few more images I'd like to add to your list. One is the My Lai Massacre. One is the Buddhist priest who set himself on fire. The other is the little girl that is running down the street after being napalmed. The next is the execution of the, the man who was being sh shot in, in, the, in, the, in the head by uh, the, 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 by the Viet Cong. He was a no, yeah, no, it was by, by a South Vietnamese officer. Yeah, no, it was he, a, but he was a, a the he was a he was a Viet, he was a North yeah. Vietnamese prisoner, yeah. and he was he was he was had his hands tied. He right, was, but it was a, it was a it was a U.S. backed soldier, a Vietnamese, Vietnamese soldier, soldier, right? That, 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 that doing the execution, executed him. right? And these images took a long time, as Carol suggested, to get disseminated into the United States because, and this is what I mean about the internet and the, and the dissemination, the speed of information flow. Because it took so long for those Im images to come into view to the level of, of deep comprehension from, you know, from, a, even from, from the most humanistic point of view, from one human being to another human being, very, very, very slow because the U.S. government understood that these images would slow down what had been taking place in Vietnam without question. And sure enough, as soon as those images hit the day of light, it was at the light of day, whichever the way that phrase goes, it changed public opinion in this country. The power of the image changed okay. public opinion. That's right. Very, very important. Okay, so in this sense, I agree with Carol that the, the possibility of the power of what she referred to as art or art as image the representation of art as image, however one want to categorize or contain or to, 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 to make reference to what it means to, com to have a nonverbal communication, right? Fascinating thing that happened was Abu Ghraib did absolutely nothing, in my opinion. Absolutely. I, 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 I disagree. Absolutely not. What, what, who, what did it change? See, the way that these images... Change public opinion, but the U.S. government doesn't give a damn about public opinion. No, understood, but, it, but, it, but it's not... A, but public opinion. I, I, use those, I use those images in my lectures all the time. Yeah, I could be showing roses. It, it's, it, they have... The, the, the severity of those images, just like the violence that you were referring to before, has become anesthetized. It, had become neutral, it has become neutralized. They said, that, look, you know, I remember that, it, it, that's what cheerleaders do, right? They all stack themselves up and one gets on top and cheer. I mean, it's the, we have to move imagery, art making, the content of that which we are interested in trying to form multiple simultaneous points of view about has to be updated in a way that we have not yet considered. So in other words, yeah. we must, the, the, the vehicles of the exchange of information and the dissemination of imagery has to be more powerful than Abu Ghraib. Because if something like that does not affect people's world view, then you have to ask yourself, what does it gonna take for someone to be concerned about the way in which the world is currently functioning. Well, I, I mean, I only, I, I, I agree with you up to a point. I mean, in the same way that, and talk about the power of the image, the majority of the population of the United States supported the Vietnam War until the Image. Eli Massacre That's was right. made public. And then <clears throat> you had the, the other. Statistically, or whoever's doing the polls, that happened after Abu Ghraib. 
when those op the images were made public, all of a sudden people started questioning the war and questioning what the, the U.S. was doing in the war and questioning what the war was doing to our own kids. But the additional problem, I think, is, is, is what Gore Vidal calls um, historical amnesia. I mean, I had a group of UCLA <coughs> freshmen, about 35 <coughs> of them, comfort to my officer presentation. Uh, let's see, uh, the, the Abu Ghraib photos were, were February 2004. So this was either, two, I think, 2007. So it's three years later. So these kids who were 17 were 14 when all that stuff. Well, what 14-year-old kid, you know, watches the news or pay attention, you know? It was not their, their frame of reference. It used to be there were only three TV stations and everybody watched the news because news was on all three stations at the same time. Now you can go through your whole life watching TV 24-7 <coughs> and never watch news or Fox News, which is not news. No. And, and so, <laughs> so I asked them, Fox News I, is news we have too. a poster, we have, we have, a, we have a poster. News assumes that, fact. That was a takeoff on the iPod ad, that, 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 hot, that very stylistic. They did that for Abu Ghraib. Right. Yes. And it was done like with A bunch the, of artists in New York. And, well, and, the, and a bunch of artists in LA did the, had the same idea at the same time. Right. So it was really no, an amazing, yeah. amazing you have, thing. You have both posters? No, we only have the LA. We have oh, pictures. I have them. You have the New York one? I have them, yeah. Oh, can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about We'll have to make a deal. We'll have to talk we'll, about we'll this. Talk about <laughs> and, so I talk about him, but I don't. I don't. If, if you go online, though, and you look They're up. They're great. They're great. You look up uh, Abu Ghraib. No, if you just look just up, look up iPod, Abu Ghraib. Abu Ghraib, I, no, Abu Ghraib iPod. You'll see, and what they did, it was, I mean, this is just a little. 10,000 volts. <laughs> this is just, a, you know, like I said, what, what these artists did, both in LA and New York, they, they, they made this poster to look like the iPod ad, except they had the Abu Ghraib prisoner, and the same bright color that iPod ad, and they inserted them in the midst of the real iPod ads. I mean, it's ultimate subversion, because you do a double take when you look at this iPod ad, and there you see all these dancing people with the, you know, the, the white wire attached to their, to their ear. And then you see this image of torture, also with the white wire. 